Well, a major rocket attack on the Kabul airport has been averted after the defences installed at the airport repelled the incoming rockets there. Local media reports say that five rockets have fired from a vehicle at Khabar Khani lab area towards Kabul airport. However, they were intercepted by a missile defence system. Witnesses say rockets struck Salim Karwa neighbourhood near Kabul's international airport. Gunfire immediately followed the explosions, but it wasn't immediately clear who was firing. At least one of the rockets hit a residential building, causing some damage. White House has confirmed rocket attack at Kabul airport and has maintained that evacuation operations will continue uninterrupted. This comes a day after U.S. forces launched a drone strike on an explosive-laden vehicle headed towards the Hamid Karzai International Airport. I'm here in the location near the impact site after a series of rockets were fired at Kabul airport. As many as four rockets come zooming in from Khaykhana located Labijar from mobile launcher at Takwaika. Ahmad Navid Kawesh from India today and Ajdaq Kabul. United States carried out its second retaliatory strike in Kabul on Sunday, targeting car bomb headed for the airport. The strike comes hours after U.S. President Joseph Biden declared that drone strike in Nangharhar, which was carried out earlier, will not be the last one. U.S. strikes back again with a preemptive air strike against a group of would-be suicide bombers near Kabul airport. U.S. Central Command spokesperson Bill Urban has confirmed the air strike. He said the U.S. conducted a self-defense unmanned over-the-horizon air strike on a vehicle in Kabul. The main purpose of the airstrike was to eliminate an imminent ISIS-K threat to Hamid Karzai International Airport. He added that the military is confident that the strike successfully hit the target. The Central Command said that explosions from the vehicles indicated the presence of a substantial amount of explosive material. U.S. says it is still assessing the possibilities of civilian casualties. The airstrike comes hours after U.S. President Joe Biden's warning. The U.S. President, like in the past, had warned of more terror strikes at Kabul airport and vowed to hunt the perpetrators down. To those who carried out this attack, as well as anyone who wishes America harm, know this. We will not forgive. We will not forget. We will hunt you down and make you pay. This is the second airstrike conducted by the U.S. military within three days inside Afghanistan. Earlier, U.S. carried out drone strikes in the Nangarhar province of Afghanistan after two suspected suicide attackers struck in quick succession at the Kabul airport on Thursday. 13 U.S. Marines and at least 170 Afghans awaiting evacuation were killed in the attacks. Both U.S. and Taliban were quick to blame ISIS-K for the strikes. After the Nangarhar strikes, the U.S. claimed that the mastermind of the Kabul airport attacks and a key member of Islamic State Khorasan were killed in the Nangarhar precision strikes. The Taliban too claimed that once the U.S. fully exits the war-ravaged country, their fighters will go after ISIS-K. Our 
معلومات دیتا ہوں ان شاء اللہ بعد میں اس کا اس کا معلومات اچھی طور پر معلوم ہوگی اور ایک شخص ہیں کہ اس کام کا داعش کا ہاتھ ہے داعش اپنی ذرائع کی وسیلے میں اس عملے کا مسئلہ بھی دیتا پہنچ ہوگی As the U.S. winds down its Afghan operation, it may use its ability for long-distance strikes to protect itself from terror emanating from Afghanistan. Bureau Report, India Today. U.S. President Joseph Biden received the bodies of slain U.S. troops at the Dover Air Force Base to honor members of the military who lost their lives in the August 26 Kabul twin bomb blast. After arriving at the base in Delwar, the U.S. President along with his wife Dr. Jill Biden met with the families of killed service members on Sunday. This marks the first time Biden is attending the ceremony known as Dignified Transfer, which is a procedure that honors the return of the remains of the U.S. troops killed in military actions outside of America. The two suicide blasts in Kabul claimed over 100 lives including 13 troops on Thursday. Islamic State Khorasan province took responsibility of these attacks. Afghanistan is on the verge of collapse after Taliban took over the country. With the Afghan currency tumbling, food prices rising, even banks continue to remain closed. Some Kabul residents protested in the city. Here's a report. <laughs> Afghans took to the streets in Kabul on Saturday. Unhappy, an eyewitness said that banks have largely remained closed since the Taliban swept back into power. Concerns are growing in the capital over an impending financial crisis. The Taliban's takeover has sent the Afghani currency tumbling. And with many banks shut and food prices rising quickly, daily life is becoming more difficult. Elsewhere in the city, trader Safiullah Nazari said people are grateful for good security, but that financial problems are more dangerous than insecurity. If the situation continues and employees of the government don't get their salaries and a businessman cannot get his money from the bank for trading, the result of this is very horrible and there will be poverty in society as well and no one can solve that issue. Nazari said the Taliban had promised earlier in the week to reopen banks. Elsewhere in the Afghan capital, Taliban roadblocks prevented people from accessing the airport following a massive suicide attack on Thursday. Overnight, the US launched a drone strike against an Islamic State target in retaliation for the attack, in which 13 US service members and up to 170 others were killed. Well, ever since the Taliban took over Afghanistan, there have been apprehensions concerning India's trade ties with the country. A senior member of the Taliban leadership, Sher Mohammad Abbas Stan Kherzai, has said that the group wants to maintain trade, economic and political relations with India, describing India as an important country in the region. A Taliban leader has also said that air trade route between India and Afghanistan needs to be kept open. He was referring to the air corridor between India and Afghanistan that was established to boost trade between the two countries in view of Pakistan's denial to allow transit access. India has been a key stakeholder in Afghanistan and has invested nearly $3 billion in carrying out around 500 projects across the country. India Today's Akshita Nangopal spoke exclusively to the Taliban spokesperson on ties with India. Listen in. Mr. Mujahid, what exactly is going to be the diplomatic relations of the Islamic Emirate, of the Taliban, with neighboring countries, particularly with countries that have supported the previous government, like us, like the Indian government? Now, after the establishment, is there any desire to really ensure that, again, you restitch ties and relations with some of these countries, like India, again, who provide facilities? And is there also going to be a question of an ambassador from the Islamic Emirate being introduced, being introduced to other countries? Is that going to happen? Uh, diplomatic وجود سفیرها در کشورها یک کار متقابل است یا از یک طرف نمیشه ما خواهان ازی هستیم که تمام کشورها 
با ما روابط حسنه داشته باشه به شمول هندوستان که کشور مهم منطقه است و در تاریخ با افغانستان روابط داشته و همچنان همکاری های داشته ما می خواهیم که همکاری های سالمشان دوام بکنه در رسای دیپلماتیک با هم روابط حسنه داشته باشیم همچنان اگر نیاز میشه سفیر های ما هم در تمام کشورها خواد بود و سفرهای کشورهای دیگر هم در افغانستان فعلا هم هستن فضای اطمینانی برشان مساعد شده و ما ترجیح میتیم که روابط خوب با تمام کشورها داشته باشه So, Mr. Mujahid, you did touch upon how India's had good ties previously with Afghanistan. There is a worry here, however, uh, and most of the reports seem to be suggesting this, that the Tariq e Taliban was in collusion with Masood Azhar, and as uh, Azhar has really asked some Taliban fighters from Afghanistan to be sent across to spread terror in Kashmir. If this really is true, and again, I'm quoting reports here, how much can the relationship of India and Afghanistan be damaged? ما مطمئنا گفته میتونیم که امارات اسلامی افغانستان اجازه نمیده که از خاک ما علیه کدام کشور دیگر خطر ایجاد شود با می پالیسی و با می اساس ما اطمینان میتیم هم به کشور هند هم به کشورهای دیگر که از طرف ما برشان کدام تهدید وجود نخواهد داشت در این مورد کدام چیزی که پخش شده یا آوازه ها و فهات حقیقت نداره ما را رد میکنیم Mujahid, focusing on what's happening in Afghanistan and really the fight for Panjshir, we know that talks have been held by a delegation of the Islamic Emirate with the Northern Alliance that's led by Ahmed Masood. Has there been any sort of breakthrough, any agreements that have been reached? Can you take us through the conversation that's happened so far? باور ما هست که معلوماتی که اخیرا داریم گفتگوها نظام هست هر دو طرف تیمایشان به طرف خود برگشتن تا نظر نهایی رو با هم برسانند یکی بعدا چی میشه فعلا گفته نمیتونه ولی غالبا شاید موضوع به جنگ نگرایه و از رای تفاهم مسئله حل شود India meanwhile is adopting a wait and watch approach when it comes to ties with Afghanistan. Here's what the MEA spokesperson had to say when asked about whether India would recognize the Taliban regime. The situation on the ground is uncertain as all of you know. Uh, the primary concern or prime concern currently is the security and safety of the people. Okay. Uh, currently there is a lack of clarity or no clarity about any entity forming a government uh, in Kabul. So I think we are jumping the gun here regarding uh, recognition. Uh, we of course continue to monitor the situation very carefully. Uh, this is an evolving situation and I think uh, for the moment that's all I have to say about uh, this element. The Battle of Panjshir Valley has intensified. The Taliban claim they have made gains in Panjshir. The forces of the anti-Taliban resistance have, however, denied these claims. Ayman Masood spokesperson Trump Panjshir spoke to India today and said these reports are nothing but Taliban propaganda and that Taliban have not entered Panjshir. Negotiations between resistance forces and the Islamic terrorist group are still going on. Taliban have now shut down internet services in the valley, a move apparently aimed at preventing caretaker President Amrullah Saleh from tweeting. Panjshir is the only valley that has ever, never rather been captured, not by the Taliban, not by the Soviets. The province is currently home to the anti-Taliban front, led by Amrullah Saleh and Northern Alliance Commander Ahmed Shah Massoud's son, Ahmed Massoud. This is not correct. Uh, this is part of their propaganda. They have a video from another place of Afghanistan, perhaps one of the another valleys, and they have shown that uh, even they have distributed to some of the uh, local TV channels in Kabul. Uh, this is absolutely uh, wrong. <laughs> 